What's up guys, welcome back to Cars Cost and Technology. Uh, for those of you that are wondering why the heck I'm on a motorcycle and where I've been for the last couple months, I did upload a video just last week uh, with uh, all those answers and a lot more information than that one. So definitely check that video out if you haven't already seen it. Uh, I'll put a card above to check it out. Uh, but I did get a lot of good feedback on that video while riding my bike and kind of explaining what's going on. And uh, it turns out there's a lot more people here on the channel that either have motorcycles or enjoy motorcycle content than I initially thought. So want to make another video with the bike uh, I will definitely get back to my regular videos for those of you that are thinking I want to see Corvettes I, I definitely understand don't think this is just a motorcycle channel but like I said I did get a lot of good feedback a lot of people saying that they want to see more bike content so I want to put something together for you guys uh, before I go back to just the regular videos I've made in the past uh, I want to talk about some of the main differences or pros and cons of purchasing and owning a sports car versus a sport bike uh, some of the things that I'm going to talk about are not necessarily only for sport bikes and they could also apply to ooh, rough road here um, they could also apply to motorcycles in general others are specifically about sport bikes not necessarily including say touring bikes uh, dual sports uh, cruisers things like that so keep that in mind but again I want to go over some things that if you say have one or the other and are considering purchasing say a sports car if you have a sport bike or if you're considering purchasing a sport bike and you already have a sports car you could have a lot of questions or you may be in the middle now and not have either and just kind of dying to buy yourself something that you can go have fun on. Um, but let's talk about a couple of key factors here. This is not going to be the most in-depth video ever. Uh, I'm just going to cover some of the basics. First thing that you need to know is performance. You know, when you're looking at a sports car versus a sport bike, it's kind of a given that most sport bikes, because of the power to weight ratio, are going to be significantly faster dollar per dollar than a sports car just kind of goes without saying uh, not in every scenario there may be some rare scenarios where you might be able to find a car that's faster per dollar or, or more performance per dollar than a bike but it's going to be extremely uncommon and that's kind of why bikes seem to be so appealing but i do also want to talk about the cost of ownership there that go along with that performance that sometimes can tip the scales back in the other direction depending on your perspective and what you plan on doing with it so if you're in a situation where you already have a daily driver nothing too fancy just something that gets you from point a to point b you're looking to add something to the garage something that's fun uh, good value and that you can enjoy uh, without breaking the bank sport bike is a great option because obviously you really need a secondary vehicle it's really difficult to daily drive and have a sport bike as your only method of transportation where a sports car on the other hand you definitely can do that with the appropriate tires and if you live in the right climate it's not an issue to daily drive a sports car i have for a couple years now no big deal um, but again if you're looking to add on to the garage you know one thing you want to take into consideration about cost of a sport bike they look really cheap up front but the insurance can be significantly more expensive than a sports car and I, when i say significantly i mean two to three maybe even four times more than what you pay for a uh, extremely valuable and fast sports car obviously it depends on your driving record and where you live and a couple other variables as well but uh, generally speaking uh, sport bikes are much more expensive to insure than sports cars or cars in general so you want to definitely take that in consideration you also want to think about the gear that you have to purchase with a car you can pretty much just get in it go have a good time uh, you got your seat belt built right in but on a sport bike on the other hand you really need to purchase a helmet you need to pick up some gloves maybe a jacket boots things like that i mean everybody's different as far as what level of gear they're comfortable riding in uh, i feel like the more the better i, I would never want to uh, put your life at risk just to save a couple bucks i mean i i wear not everything it's not like i'm out here in full race leathers but i do try to wear enough gear to to keep myself protected if i were to uh, go down in low speeds it would uh, protect me from any significant harm obviously if you go down at really high speeds in the right scenario no real level of gear is going to help you unfortunately it's sad to say that but that's just the reality where uh, in a car again you've got airbags you've got a seat belt you've got a, a frame built around you glass all that so you're you're pretty protected from the elements but you can still get hurt really badly in a car if you're not careful uh, and that obviously is a, a big factor as far as safety goes it's not really one of my bullet points on the punch list so to speak but it is definitely something that you need to take into consideration is the uh, much higher risk involved with a motorcycle and that ties back into the uh, insurance rates you know that's that's why they're so much more expensive is they, they are definitely more dangerous and it's just something that you need to uh, accept and and learn to do the best that you can to counter a lot of those risks but still enjoy the bike now as far as practicality goes i know you're thinking well obviously i'm not going to daily drive my bike but i want to talk more about the actual logistics of owning one and enjoying it 
I was kind of surprised just in the fact that I don't really have a whole lot of friends who ride bikes or a group that I can get together with and go riding. Um, but it's a little bit more difficult to say enjoy a bike with some of your buddies or even your, your uh, significant other just simply because the, the logistics of the small back seat and needing gear to go out and enjoy it properly, it, you're definitely not going to get your buddies to jump on the back of a sport bike with you and, and say, yeah, man, let's go for a rip and see how, how, how fast this thing is. You know, it just doesn't really work that way. Where with a car, obviously, you at least have one other seat, unless if you have a, a demon with the front seat delete, but um, you have at least one other seat where you can get, get a friend in there with you and kind of show off the car and, and some of the tech in there as well as the, the acceleration, the exhaust note. And that's a that's a big part of owning and enjoying uh, something like that. It's just kind of sharing it with friends, family. We're on a bike again. You can rev it up for people. Um, if you have a helmet, maybe give them a quick ride, but it's much more difficult. So again, if you have a group of friends that already have bikes, you're going to be able to enjoy that with them, have a good time. Uh, if you don't, you're going to have some obstacles of really enjoying it in the same manner or, or way that you would enjoy a car. Uh, and that's not that big of a deal at the end of the day. Um, I also want to talk about, you know, the seasons. We talked about daily driving it, but beyond just the ability to use it as daily transportation, you have the fact of when you're going to be able to take it out and enjoy it. With a sports car, nobody really wants to go out in the rain and, or snow or anything like that and, and get their car all dirty and things like that, but you're able to. You know, if you wanted to go out on a date one night or you're going out and meet up with some friends and there's a light rain, yeah, you're probably not going to want to take your Corvette out, but you can if you want to. You know, it's something that you can take out for the night and have a good time with. Where with a sport bike, that's definitely not going to be enjoyable to go, like I said, on a date or meet up with some friends, take your wife out, whatever, on, in the in a light rain, uh, or if it's really cold outside. So you've got a lot more limitations on when you can enjoy it, but when the when the climate is right, you know, say you're in spring, fall, summer, um, good weather outside it's really really hard to match the excitement and the fun that you get on a bike i mean i've owned uh, a lot of different nice cars i've driven a ton of different nice cars for the different reviews that i've done here on the channel and i can tell you it's really really difficult to say any one of those cars brings more excitement than a bike and the bike that i have is not even that fast this is more of an entry-level beginner bike that i just picked up bought a cash just something to ride and have fun with until i get my next car um but like I said, there's there's a lot of factors there. I know I'm kind of rambling. I said in my last video, uh, I'm definitely no moto vlogger, so I just asked for some patience with everybody while I kind of learned this format of making videos. But it's fun. It's something different and uh, shake things up. And I just want to go over a few of those key points. You know, again, the cost of insurance, cost of buying gear, uh, the limited amount of time that you'll be able to use it. Uh, for me, I feel like if you had to choose one, sports car is going to be a better option for you because you're going to have the practicality of of driving it more frequently, uh, more utility with it, and still gonna have a really good time with it. Uh, if you have the option of having both or you have another vehicle that you can depend on, Sport Bike is a great option. I mean, like I said, for the, the upfront cost, uh, it's hard to beat this much fun, this type of performance. So I would highly recommend it. And uh, again, obviously we talked about the other factors as far as enjoying it with your friends, uh, the seasons, things like that. So. I hope that you guys found some of this information helpful. Again, I know it's not the most thorough thorough guide, but I want to share some of my feedback on, on owning both and kind of where I'm at, whether I, what I would do if I would do it again. I, I'm definitely, at this point in life, not wanting to go without either of them. I'm dying to get my next sports car. I uh, want it to be the C8 mid-engine Corvette, but even at that point, I don't have any plans of selling the bike. I've had a really good time on it, plan on keeping it, always to uh, take out and enjoy, maybe trading up for something a little more powerful, but uh, I personally would like to have both, and that's just a... Uh, financial priority for me. I know not everyone's in that boat, but uh, again, I hope you did enjoy the video. If you have any other questions on owning a sports car, on owning a sport bike, on the channel in general, definitely let me know down below in the comments. Had a good time uh, talking with some of you guys that I haven't talked to in a while in the comments in my last video. So let me know uh, if you have anything on your mind, anything you want to ask. I hope that I did cover everything or uh, at least some of the key points that people are curious about. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please give the video a like if you did enjoy it. Consider subscribing or sharing with any friends or family who may find it helpful. And we will talk to you next time. Have a great day.